Hello everyone, and welcome to part 9 of my Dark Souls video walkthrough. Before we head into the area, I forgot to show you this hidden message previously. This is right outside the place where you find Briggs of Vinheim. Alright, now let's look at the key we found on the Kappa Demon. And this tells us it will open the door to the depth. And, well, it's this door. This is where the shortcut from Firelink to the Capra Demon boss fight takes you out. And you can now open this door and begin exploring. As you go down here, there's a bit of an ambush. There will be another hollow coming from the right. So you want to be careful. Because while these guys may still not look like much, Having them attack you from behind can be quite a problem. And then there's two more in this corridor here. And a lot more in the area down below. But first, heading backwards, there's an item. It's just a soul, but worth grabbing nonetheless. Okay, now the ones down here can be attacked using ranged means. Uh, sorcery works well, but the lightning miracle on my cleric would also work. Fire bombs even work if you uh, want to use those. And you can kill many of these enemies before they ever aggro onto you. This one's standing quite close and is a little hard to log onto, but it also works out. And then there's one more down here. And while individually they're not very bad, if they attack you in bulk, they can actually become a real problem. So if you are going the melee route, just pull them carefully. They are easy to separate and you will most of the time have them coming at you one after the other. And then they're not exactly difficult to fight. You can even just block and then uh, hit them back. Even the torch-wielding ones aren't that bad, if you block them. And one more guy hiding behind this pillar. Jumping attacks, especially with a big weapon like this, tend to go through objects. Down here there's a dog, and the second dog next to the butcher in the background there is a stronger version. He sneakily dodged my attack here, but it doesn't matter. This one has a little more HP, and when you kill him, the Butcher becomes aware of you. As you can see on the top right there, the Butcher can also be parried on certain attacks, but especially since I'm two-handing on this character, I decided to just go for a backstab. And this chest contains a very valuable item, the Large Ember. This is incredibly useful. Because it allows you to upgrade your weapons from plus 5 to plus 10. Or it, it opens the opportunity of doing so. You still need upgrade materials for it. But previously your weapons could not be upgraded beyond plus 5. And now standard upgrades go to plus 10. Okay, going up here we have a second butcher. If you don't have a ranged means to um, to aggro him, he will also aggro if you go further down this corridor. And uh, you can get him down that way, but might as well hit him with a ranged attack. Uh, I was dancing around him quite a bit here, waiting for a good attack, because this character is not didn't have any healing left. And the second butcher drops the sack. You. Yeah, yes, you. Here, over, over here. Please, you must help me. Oh, you, you, there you are. You must help me. Or else, she'll have me for lunch. You're my only hope. Oh, please. <laughs> Thank you. I would have been a supper without you. Been eaten alive, I shudder to think. 
Thank you. Thank you dearly. I am Laurentius. For the great swamp, I will not forget my debt to you. Um. Now this is the pyromancer teacher. And to show you a little more about him, I'll now take a bit of a detour back to Filing Shrine. This will be a little bit of a talky bit, but interesting things are happening. Okay, first, let's see if our friend over here has anything new to say. Why, what a surprise. I didn't expect you to make it. Oh, somebody rang the bell. Wait. Was it you? You never give up, do you? I don't know how you do it. Well, don't stop now. Only one more. But it's going to be suicide. <laughs> Did you see her? That virtuous little maiden, complete with followers in tow? They're probably going straight to pillage graves. I've heard enough about the lady for a lifetime. What absolute rubbish, eh? <laughs> What's wrong? Get a bit of a scare out there? No problem. Have a seat and get comfortable. We'll both be hollow before you know it. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? I've already decided. I don't really care. I'm simply crestfallen. Okay. Now you'll notice down here, the knight we rescued is no longer present. But we'll meet him again. Don't worry about that. And since I'm down here, I'm just quickly upgrading my Estes flask. Now, the sack that dropped from the second butcher. There's a chance that the first butcher will drop it. In that case, the second one won't. But you're guaranteed to get one, basically. And usually the second one will be the one to drop it. Okay. Now there's one more thing that's happened. This is more of a cleric thing. Oh, hello. My guests have finally arrived. I will be departing with them shortly. So, I'm afraid I will be saying goodbye soon. It was a pleasure. Hmm? What have we here? You look awfully raggedy. Times are grim. The least you can do is look sharp. Don't you dare meet my lady like that. You might scare her off for good. Now let's meet the lady. It, it takes me a while sometimes to get the camera position right, so bear with me for a second here. You are undead as well? Then we've no time to fraternize. I have my mission and you no doubt have yours. We must not let this curse overcome us. Did I not explain the urgency of our tasks? Or are you so uncouth as to lack such judgment? By the looks of you, I should think not. And this group will become relevant in a later part. Far later, actually. But now back to the pyromancer we rescued. Well, I see you made it out. Yeah, I, I made it out safely too. I have my pyromancy of the Great Swamp, so I can usually manage with a bit of care. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, I can share my spells with you. I think you have a knack for it, all you need are the materials. I'll be pleased to help you. Ah, uh, unless you find the magics unsavory. Yeah, wonderful. I'm sure that you know, they'll be of some use, some assistance. Well, let's get started right now. Okay, I'm just buying some additional damage spells here. You'll see them in action eventually. Um, and then I'm upgrading the Pyromancy Flame. Now, be aware that you have to say no to get him to start selling you his spells. However, if you accidentally say yes, he will then ask you if you've changed your mind. So the second time around, no is not the right answer anymore. Now you get infinite tries on this, but it's just something to be aware of. Goodbye then. Come back if you find anything new. 
All right, now let's head back into the depth. This is where I left you off, where I killed the butcher. And I'll now show you the recommended and easy and fast way into this area. I will also show you the wrong way later, but this is what you should do. There's no reason not to do it this way. You dump, jump down that chute, and then walking along the edge here, you can find the spider shield, which in addition to its properties, is able to block all poison that uh, is incoming. And the giant red can be dis, uh, can be dealt with using any kind of ranged means you have. In this case, fire bombs. You can also use sorcery, ranged miracles, bow and arrow, throwing knives, anything you like. And if your weapon is strong enough, you can also use a plunging attack. Depending on your weapon, this may even be a one-hit kill. Okay, grabbing a soul here. This item back here, remember this corpse, we'll find it again from a different angle later on. And the red will also always drop a humanity. And over here on the left, we have a key. If you have the master key, you don't need it, but grab it anyway, I guess. And if you use the guidance right here, we'll get a nice little hint, telling us to try sliding down. So let's do it. Also note this drop here, I will label this drop A. This will become important later on, because you can fall down in various places here. After you've slid down, you can just climb up these stairs on the right. This door will only open from this side, and it's a very convenient shortcut. And funnily enough, using Seek Guidance, developers also told us that this is a shortcut. Now once this is done, there's one more staircase to climb, there's a torch hollow on top. Not very dangerous, but just be careful. And then this is opened using the key we just found in the rat chamber. And this gets us to the bonfire, which is very convenient. I'll also uh, kindle this quickly, because I need to turn human anyway. Now if you have the master key, the master key will also open this door. But since you're going past the rat anyway on your way down, unless you don't feel like killing it, you should just grab the key. And now for the wrong way down. This is where the second butcher jumped down. And at the end of that corridor there's a door. And in this first chamber, there's a bit of a trap. Now it's very difficult to spot, because, especially because it's quite dark, but there's a slime hanging from the ceiling, and if you try to grab that item, he will drop down on your head and do damage to you with a grab attack. However, what you can do is equip a bow. Again, it doesn't matter if you don't meet the requirements, you just need to be able to shoot with it. And any arrows will do. One damage is sufficient. And then you just aim up at the slime, and hitting it, even with a single point of damage, will make it fall down. And now here you can see the new Pyromancy in action. Especially with the upgraded Pyromancy Flame, this is quite powerful. And it's just a fairly s small sword. Now note that the Pyromancy Flame increases the damage as you upgrade it. And that's the only way to increase the damage of Pyromancies. It doesn't scale with your intelligence or your faith, like other forms of magic do. It's just the power of your flame in, uh, determines the power of your spells. And here there's a lot more slimes hanging from the ceiling. But you can just run in and trigger them falling down without them dropping on your head. Because if they drop on your head, they do a grab attack which does a lot of damage. Might even one hit you if you're on low vitality. And these slimes are very resilient to most forms of damage. Except for, conveniently enough, fire damage. That is quite useful against them. Um, lightning also works to some extent, but especially standard physical attacks, they don't take much damage from it. You can kill them quite easily still, because they're very, very slow, but it, it takes a while. It's somewhat tedious. And they are also the first source, farmable source, of large titanite shards. But I wouldn't recommend farming them. You can if you like. Okay, and in the bonfire chamber, there's another hidden message saying, I can't take this. I guess this is just a bit of a troll. Okay, now, after we've gotten the bonfire, let's head into the area proper.
This is just to get you, give you the full exploration. You could now run straight to the boss. And these rats here, unlike the slimes, are actually worth farming if you like. Because they can drop humanity. And this is the first reasonable way to farm humanity that has become available to you. This corpse has the great axe on it. Fairly heavy, but it, uh, it does decent damage, but it has very low range. And my strength character has a better sword, so I'm not going to be using it. But yes, these rats have a decent chance of dropping humanity. And since, um, especially if you're new to the game, you will die quite a bit and lose your humanity over and over, being able to farm it is nice. So if you're struggling, farm the rats until you have, I don't know, maybe 20 or so humanities. And that will make it a lot easier. There's another soul here. And then a fog gate. Now I would definitely recommend you go this way. Because there's an enemy here that you should really kill before doing the boss. Incidentally, this is what a character with the large upper body looks like without armor. He does have a bit of a Resident Evil 5 Chris Redfield going on here. But down there... There's another channeler. We've met one of these before the Gargoyles boss fight as well. And same as that time, he will do the dance to buff nearby uh, enemies and he will use magic. But if you just wait patiently up here, eventually he will run into melee range and you can fight him without having to deal with the rats. It might take you longer for him to stop casting the spells, but eventually he will run up and try to hit you with the trident. And that way you don't have to deal with the rat and the channeler at the same time. And you can also pull the rats separately by moving down these stairs very carefully. Especially when they're buffed, they do a fairly large amount of damage. Of course, keep in mind I'm not wearing any armor because it's too heavy. Now back here, these two boxes are somewhat trapped. There's rats in them. The next set of boxes, however, is perfectly fine, and then hidden away in this corner is the first guaranteed large titanite shard. And this is very worthwhile to pick up. I'll get into why at the beginning of next episode, but if you're using a standard upgraded weapon, grab that large titanite shard. It will come in handy. Okay, and there's a bit of a network of corridors here. To the right, there's another rat, and drop a B. Again, this will become important. And down this corridor, there's another rat. And this is the corpse I told you to keep in mind earlier. In the giant rat room, which is to the right. And to the left, there's drop C. Just quickly showing you this. And as I said, we move into the giant rat room by going up here. Obviously, the rat is dead, so it's perfectly safe to go through. If the rat is still alive, it is a very formidable enemy. It's, it's no joke, so be careful about it. Right, now let's explore the lower part of the sewers. There's a fairly large amount of big rats here. It's best to wait for them to attack and then go in for a counter. Because their attacks are really quite quick and um, have a decent potential to stagger you. Now note that I'm human. And that is intentional. Because as you move past this corner here, you're in human form, you will be met with an NPC invasion. And back there is where drop A takes you. So if you drop down drop A in the giant red room, that's where you'll land. And there it is, Knight Kirk invaded. He uses the Armor of Thorns, which deals damage to you if it rolls past you. But he's not very difficult, he just uses physical attacks. You can parry him, backstab him, or just use ranged attacks. It's uh, it's not difficult to defeat, but... Uh, yeah, it's one of the three locations where he invades. He is also able to drop his sword and his shield. But this is not a guaranteed drop, it's a chance. And back here... 
These enemies are called basilisks. You want to be really, really careful about them. They have no physical attacks. By the way, that's where drop B lands. The only thing they can do is spit a sort of mist at you. That stuff inflicts curse and you do not want to get cursed. I usually make an effort to show you stuff so you can see what it looks like, what, what happens, but I'm not going to show you what happens when you get cursed. Now what does happen is, if your curse meter fills up, you're going to see it in a moment. There, that's my curse meter. If that fills up to full, I get instantly killed and afflicted with a curse status, which means my maximum HP is reduced by half. Very, very bad. And getting rid of it is quite tedious. You need to either buy a purging stone, which would be from the guy who spawned after you rang the first bell, after the gargoyles fight, or from the female undead merchant, even though she charges a lot more. I believe she charges 6,000 souls and Oswald only maybe 3,000. This, by the way, is where drop D lands you. And there's the ring of the evil eye. But yes, curse, definitely avoid it. The enemies are easy to interrupt, and the fork is fairly easy to run out of. But, yeah, drop B around the corner. Um, really, really be careful. It is very nasty to get cursed. Avoid it at all costs. Okay. And just to complete the drops around this corner, you have to jump quickly. You can grab a humanity, and you have to jump, because down there is drop D. Takes you down to the ring. And the danger with these drops is that you fall down and you will quite often be surrounded by the basilisks and they will start cursing you. So really be careful. It is very nasty having to suddenly play with half HP, especially for a new player that can be incredibly difficult. Okay, but that's all there is to be had down here. The Ring of the Evil Eye, by the way, gives you some health back every time you kill an enemy. Um, which might seem really handy, but generally... I guess at this point you don't have that many better spells, so you might as well use it. Uh, better rings, sorry. But it's not something you'll be using in the long run. That is where the rat slide is, by the way, so you know where we are. And fire is still the best way to deal with these blob monster slime things. Which is why I conveniently bought some more fire spells. Like Pyromancer. And then there's also two rats in this room. However, rats are somewhat passive, so if you just run past them, they won't actually bother you. But might as well kill them, they can drop humanity, and they're not exactly difficult to fight. But yeah, this one just runs away and hides in this corridor. So not something you actually need to worry about. Okay, but there's now one more NPC I'd like you to meet. Hi, Shemai, and good day to you. I'm Donald of Xenos. I'm just a, a peddler of sorts. I adore trinkets and oddities, so I trade for them. Okay, he sells gold pine resin, another three. Might as well buy them. If you haven't bought it yet, he will also sell the bottomless box. Hmm, well, I'm certain we will make a good trade of anyway, so I am willing to share some tips. If you see kindling in the catacombs, use divine weapons. That will repair the reassembling skeletons. Hmm, I'm afraid I don't see anything here. Thank you. That was a fine trade. I have this funny feeling we'll meet again soon. And we'll make another fine trade, of course. And that's him. That hint about divine weapons is very useful. And it's somewhat well hidden, but... The game does tell you, so yeah, it's just easy to miss. Okay, now we're heading to the boss. To the right there, you see the summon sign for Solaire, and in the other corner, on the other side of the pillar, you would see the summon sign for Lotrek, the same summons we had for the gargoyles. I didn't save Lotrek on this character, so I don't see his summon sign, but it would be there. And this is a boss where the gold pine resin comes in very handy, so I'm about to equip some. And as always, there will be a full boss guide. Right now I'm just showing you the boss kill on one character to 
complete the area walkthrough. The boss guide will have much more insight and uh, strategy. And though this was a fairly representative fight actually. And it's also one of the better opening cutscenes. Because what uh, it is, it's just quite well choreographed where it, it looks like a crocodile at first. And you know, it would be fitting ish to have crocodiles in the sewers. But then the whole thing climbs up, and you see it definitely isn't a crocodile. I enjoy it, I think it's well made. There we go, Gaping Dragon. And it is vulnerable to lightning. It will usually open up with a head slam attack, this one. Um, the amount of walking towards you it does before the attack is somewhat random. I have definitely seen him do the slam just instantly, well out of range, where he would never actually have hit me with it. But sometimes he just starts walking towards you and doesn't do the slam at all and just starts trying to punch you. It's just random, anyway. He can fly up a little bit to close the distance. This is the attack you want to exploit because it allows you to hit his head, which is his weak point. And it is also another boss whose tail can be cut. And my pine resin ran out here, but yeah, I didn't feel like reapplying it. Generally, it's not a difficult boss fight, but it's the first boss fight where you definitely can't just block through everything anymore. Those uh, That head slam attack is basically unblockable, so we need to not be there when it hits. But again, because that's really the first boss that is like that, they give you a lot of time. The attack is a very slow move and it won't... Uh, won't generally catch you unawares. And he was doing a lot of tail slams or tail swipes here. Generally you don't see them as often. Especially since I wasn't making much of an effort to get behind him. If you see him do this, again very slow animation, just get away because that's his vomit attack and it corrodes your equipment so it wears the durability down. And there's nothing worse than running out of durability on your main weapon during a boss fight. Especially this early on, when you probably don't have any backup weapons yet. You'll probably have upgraded one weapon, and that's the one you're using. And there's the tail cut. In addition to giving you the drop, this also prevents him from doing the tail swipes, which is nice. And again, head slam down, and you get some nice free attacks in. I didn't want to speed up the boss fight, even though it's somewhat repetitive, especially on a slow damage, uh, a low damage weapon like this one. But... Uh, if you want me to make these boss fights shorter in the future, because there are full boss video guides coming out anyway, uh, let me know. Aside from that though, that's really all there is to it. If he does this charge by the way, his entire body becomes a hitbox, so just keep your distance. That's the kill. As the hard leather set can be found in the actual boss arena. And for killing him you get the Blight Town Key. Homeward Bone, Twin Humanities and 25,000 souls. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this useful. And bye bye.